So we've been hearing a lot about GPT engineer and how it can build complete apps for use using just one prompt. So we're going to be testing it out. As of right now, I have very little understanding of how code works. I know the structure, I know what is server and the client. But if you tell me to independently write the code, I may struggle a bit, right? So this is the repository where the code is based. And by the way, there have been a lot of changes after this first came out. So this is the most updated video about GPT engineer you will see so far. Um, you can go ahead and read the instructions with respect to how that's done, but let's just go and clone the repository. So in order to do this, just copy this link, go to the folder where you want to add all these files, right? So let's say I want to add the files here, select the path and type CMD, type JIT clone. And obviously, yes, you need Python and Git installed in order to use and clone these models. So you type git clone and you paste and you paste the link to the repository. It's went ahead and cloned the repository in our local system and undo CD GPT engineer, which will take us to the folder where this repository is cloned and do code and type code. This should open VS code. If you're using VS code, if you're using something else, it's fine. Next, what you want to do is you want to install the requirements for this. So if you scroll down here, you'll see they mentioned instructions to install necessary libraries here. So you can either create a separate environment and clone or install libraries there, or you can use this command to install in, install it in your main environment. I'd recommend creating an environment before doing this. Anyway, so whichever route you decide to go, the instructions are here. I'm going to go the first route. So I'm going to say pip install requirements. This will install all the necessary things that you need in order to make this work. Now I've already kind of cloned these requirements prior. So I may find you can see requirement already satisfied. I've already done this. So I don't necessarily need to reinstall it. But since you may be doing this for the first time, you might need to go through this. Anyway, so once this is done, I think I think majority of the setup is done. Next, we need to set our OpenAI API key to the environment for this to work. Okay, so for that, if you are on Mac, you need to do this export your open AI API key and just paste the key here and then press enter. If you are on windows, instead of export, just use set and open AI API key again, paste it here. Now post this, the setup is mostly done. And I think you're ready to, and you're ready to play around with the model. Now, since the initial release, all the main files have now been moved under GPT underscore engineer. Uh, prior these files were in the root folder. So the commands that you were using earlier were referencing, referencing the root folder. Now you need to go inside GPT engineer in order to make it work. So let's say, so let's just do that. Uh, but before that you need to go to projects example, and then there's a main prompt here. This is where you will actually type what you want to build. So let's say what we want to build is an AI aggregator websites so where users can visit, log in, list their tools, use Mern stack to build this, keep the design futuristic and minimalistic. Okay. So this is the prompt that we want to give to the model. Now note that for this to work, you need GPT-4 access, but I'll show you a hack in which you can use GPT-3.5 turbo in order to run this. So let's just set that up. Our prompt is ready. Now go to uh, the search and look for GPT-4. This will give you uh, locations where GPT-4 is configured as the default model. Now, if you have access to GPT-4, hands down use GPT-4 because it will give out better results. But for people who don't have access to GPT-4, they can use this hack in order to make it work for them. Okay. Okay. So the setup is now done and I think we're pretty much there. Um, now let's navigate to the GPT underscore engineer folder. Let's say CD GPT underscore engineer. Now here, what you need to do is Python main dot pi. This is the reference to the file that we want to run, which is this main file. And then you also need to add link to this main prompt uh, as a second parameter here, meaning where your main prompt is located, right? So it's currently under example main prompt. Uh, so I'm going to run this. It's possible that we may get some error, but we'll solve it along the way. Yeah. So basically you don't need to reference the file, just the folder. Let's try it now. And there you go. It's working. Now it will ask you for clarification. I've used GPT to generate a very, very high level description of a website like this. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to copy this here. Now note, 
when you first tell GPT to generate this description for you, it will go ahead and list it down like this. But pasting it like this is going to be a problem. So you can tell GPT to summarize this in one paragraph and it will do that for you, right? So once you have that copy, just right click here if you're on Windows and paste it and then press enter. And I think at this point, we're all set. You can see it's automatically uh, kind of analyzing our inputs and it started writing code. It's first creating server.js. You can see it's also kind of divided into two classes, methods, models, and functions. Now let's just wait for it to kind of run. You can notice how it's kind of prioritizing which files to build first, which files to build next. So that's really interesting. I know some structure of um, the merge stack, so I, I can understand that it's going in the right direction. Okay, so it looks like it's kind of written the backend code of this. Since it's also mentioning npm run client, I'm assuming it's also written the React code. But if I scroll through this, I can mostly see all the backend code, including server. Okay, so okay, so this is where the code is. You can see if you go to projects slash example, this is where you can find all the code. So there is server.js, which is where which is the backend of the specific website. Then there are you can also find the schemas for user and tools basically these are the backend or database schemas you can also find the schema for user and then there are routes basically this will define how the user registers and the odd token is generated the user logs in so it's also implemented the jwt method now again this um, you know if you look at this do i think this is a complete website that i can run from this point not really i need to also replace this i think Anyways, let's try running it. The package.json file is also missing, which I think you need in order to run uh, the node projects. And not just that, I think a bunch of other files are missing too. So there is add a tool, review a tool, update tools. All of these files are not generated or maybe I can't find these files. Hmm. So this is not really in a position where I can use this code to do anything at this point. Let's try it one more time. And this time, this time around we'll use GPT-4 to see if this works. I'm pasting the description again like I had done before. Okay, it kind of went ahead and clarified its own uh, follow-up questions and it's now generating the file. You can see it's generating main.py, model.py and views.py. So this is what MVC architecture is. Basically models separately, views separately and then uh, controller separately. Okay, so it's kind of started generating the file. Again, note that if you're using GPT-4, it's going to burn, um, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So ensure that you, uh, you know, use it wisely. So let's wait for it to generate the project. Kind of now defining the views for the project. Looks like it's generating the final file, which is the leaderboard.py. I think we should be done after this. Okay. Okay. So it looks like the files are now generated. Let's go to this folder and try running the files. So we're going to be CD back. We do projects, CD example. And let's say python main.py. Oh, okay, we need to be inside workspace. Uh, something popped up and I think it crashed. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's crashing. Let's try and run it outside the uh, VS Code. Yeah, it's for some reason it's crashing. Maybe it's an issue with the system. Let's see if we can remove this quit function. Mm, it's still crashing. I don't know why it's crashing, but at least you was able to build the build the whole app by merely taking a prompt. So it's giving out impressive results with at least GPT-4. And this is probably going to be it for the video, guys. I hope you were able to learn the difference between using GPT engineer in, in 3.5 Turbo versus GPT-4 plus 
if it's really valuable for you to invest that time in order to use this at this point and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you